Today we're reviewing the Elizabeth Ruth, a 74 foot modified Ed Monk design steel trawler. And we're fortunate enough to have with us the owner, Paul. Paul? Hey everyone, glad you could uh, join us on such a beautiful day to visit the Elizabeth Ruth. Um, let's just go over a couple of, couple of fine points. If we look at our uh, ground tackle, for example, uh, that hook is rated for about three times this much ship. Uh, so not only is it a large hook, we also have about 150 foot of heavy chain followed by almost 600 feet of 5 a galvanized cable. So deep water anchoring, not a problem. Right on. Yeah, it's, uh, it's some excellent gear. Uh, means I can get some sleep at night. <laughs> well, that's, what, that's the most important thing. It is. It's it beautiful. Is. So and it's nice of you to show up with a microphone. Let's uh, <laughs> go aboard and... Uh, yeah, let's take a look. Yeah. And take us through. This is our midships well deck, uh, previously holds. Uh, skiff, which the way the boat is set up with our knuckle crane, hydraulic, we can move the skiff uh, in any position on the deck. We can go center line, port side, or starboard side. So it makes it pretty easy if you have additional toys, which many times over the past we've had multiple small sailboats, kayaks, canoes, you name it, we've probably had it on here. And lots of stowage area for when you're underway that is completely protected up under the forecastle, And with this really nice whale back uh, deck, it keeps this deck dry. I've never taken water over that bow, and we've been in some pretty nasty conditions offshore. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the history, real quick, about the history of the boat. And so Tracy and I have had the boat for about 23 years, uh, raised two of our sons on the boat. Um, we are the third owners. The previous owner had her for a number of years, had some health issues, and decided to sell it, which is when we bought it. She was originally built uh, in Robinson Yard in Southern California for the owner of the yard. He wanted a uh, toy that he could take to the Bering Sea. And well, this she can it. certainly do it. Yeah, Between her long range, uh, as toughly built as she is, um, Caterpillar 343, one of the, the all-time classic best yeah. engines Caterpillar ever built. Sure. Uh, she runs really well. Uh, that's excellent. Take us forward and uh, let's see the accommodations. In the, in okay, the so forward we have the forecastle cabin, which is two individual bunks and a settee. Uh, both with privacy curtains. And the bunks are a little bit longer than the average boat bunk. Uh, we were anticipating that the boys would be tall, and they are, so that worked out very well. Um, again, as you'll see when we go to the, the stern of the boat, extra thick cushions because we like to be comfortable. And the same with the bunks, too. We went the, the heaviest, best materials that we could find. Awesome. Uh, again, because we wanted to be comfortable. Uh, plenty of stowage underneath, hanging locker on both sides. And then, of course, all the stowage up here. And actually, originally, we had a TV here for the kids. So, lots of room. Uh -oh. row. What? Row. <laughs> so, You're uh, come in here. Yeah. Our, <laughs> imagine <again>. that. <laughs> our main salon, um, because she's a sea boat, everything is built in. Uh, lots of stowage uh, under and behind everything including under the built-ins over here. You can access where Tracy likes shoes over there, access over here, larger access on this side. And in case it's a large item that we need to access, more access. Um, we built all of this. This was not original to the boat. Um, originally, actually the only thing left original in here for the most part is if we can swing over and take a look where Tracy is is the oil stove and those couple of cabinets. Other than that, everything else has been replaced by us. Sure. Including the, the stainless steel, cast stainless steel port lights uh, and everything else. Again, we uh, installed and built all of it. It's gorgeous. So over the years. Um, one of the other things that we notice in a lot of boats is these drawers, we put these in, we built them about 18 years ago. We lived on the boat for 10 years. Uh, we raised our two boys on the boat. And I think they've held up pretty well. Uh, especially if you look at three quarter inch marine mahogany. 
I mean, it looks like we built them last month. Tell us about some of the woods you used. In the, in, so in the, the boat I grew up on had an enormous amount of uh, different woods, and I really liked that. So we've tried to incorporate that into this boat. So, for example, solid mahogany um, main table, uh, tiger stripe or bird's eye birch and maple, uh, as an example. And then a lot of different mahoganies in different places around the boat. And actually, we'll go on and look at some more of those, too. All right, let's do that. Um, Propane AC fridge, so when we're out, we put it on propane, conserve our batteries. Uh, again, oil stove, which actually this one replaced the one that had been in here for 30 some hundred years. It's exactly the same as the old one. Well, then um, it's got some extras in it right now, but. Then uh, diesel cooktop. Like a broiled sponge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I tried to keep everything diesel because we carry so much diesel sure. that it was the natural choice of fuel. So the cooktop, I mean, it gets to something like a thousand degrees. Uh, this oil stove usually burns about nine, maybe 10 months out of the year. Or last year when we were in Alaska, it burned all summer too. Uh -huh. <laughs> so not only do we cook with it, but it heats this entire deck uh, and also keeps it really nice and toasty warm. So That's moving right along is the Rick is. head and shower. And then this originally was a double bunk, which we converted into our office. And as you can see, the mattress is actually up against the wall there. So we can flip it down, convert this back to a room very quickly. And it's also got its privacy curtain. And then we'll go up top here in a little bit. So moving to the down below, this is the laundry room and stairwell. And Rick, you were talking about uh, some of the woods earlier. Yeah. Uh, this, for example, is some old growth red fir that they call salmon fillet because of the green in it. And these were actually bin boards that were underwater in the holds originally when I got the boat. And I saved them because wow. they were quite thick and, and milled them to what we needed. So I've got those in a variety of places around the boat. You know, this is a, another mahogany, mm -hmm. uh, it's different from the table. And uh, so kind of a little of everything. This is a, a red oak. The stairs are a red oak. The siding is a birch. So lots of variety. Yeah, it's just gorgeous. So let's go take a look downstairs. And one of the things that I have to mention is my stairway. Uh, I took an enormous amount of time and effort because I've been on so many boats that multi-million dollar boats that have what I call kill me stairways. And that's when you're tied to the dock where the stairs are different heights, different widths, they that's curve, right. they turn. If the boat's moving, I don't want to use that. So I made sure that we did um, basically a house step, which is a 7-Eleven. And all of these are until we come down to the transition where they get a little bit wider, but they're still a seven high, mm -hmm. which is what we're all programmed for after living in a house. So, because you can use that very easily when underway without a problem. Um, next to Rick is another oil stove. So that's what we call our little fireplace. And it actually uh, heats this entire deck beautifully. Yeah, I've also got a boiler system. So we have hydronic heat throughout the boat uh, as a, a backup, again, just to be redundant. Uh, in fact, actually, we probably use the boiler system more in the summertime because I built in a hot water uh, a racetrack loop. So it goes right. from the boiler to the uh, water heater, and there's a double loop in there. So in minutes, it heats it to like 155 degrees. Then we added a, a mixing valve, a mechanical mixing valve to bring it down to 120. So we have basically unlimited hot water. So kind of nice. That's we want a nice long shower. And since we carry 1,200 gallons of fresh water, we, we don't conserve. We don't have to conserve. We typically, with the four of us, we go about five weeks. Showers every day, laundry every day. Sure. You know, the kids were throwing on each other, so not a problem. Um, again, below this settee is all stowage. And then our down below head. Oh, and I, I forgot to mention, both of the heads in this boat are Tecmas, which it was worth every penny. Yeah. I've never had a problem with these Tecmas, and they have been indestructible. No, they are. They really are. They were worth it. 
Um, anyway, so uh, head and shower. Um, these were something that I've seen on uh, some other commercial boats, this type of setup. These happen to be solid western maple, mm -hmm. <laughs> so they're quite heavy, but they slide easily, but not so easily to where when you're underway that they're going to move around. They pretty much just stay put, so that's kind of nice. Yeah. Um, we like a lot of light, so we made sure we did big hatches. There's a port light on each side in both cabins down here, as you'll see. Also, on the boat I grew up on, they had these prisms, which I thought was pretty neat. So I had to put those in this boat when we did the rebuild on her. Mm -hmm. And if the sunlight actually yeah, hits it directly, cool. it, it lights this cabin. It looks like a 100 watt light yeah. bulb or better. And there's actually, there's a, a small one which is being hit by direct sunlight in the shower. Probably the first six months after I installed them, every time I came down, I was uh, swearing that who's leaving the lights, the lights on? on? Moving yeah. into the main cabin. Again, we want a lot of light, so we've got the port lights on either side. Uh, they're actually double uh, pane glass, and they've also got three eighths inch steel crash covers on them. So if somehow you were able to blow one out, just close your crash cover and you're fine. Um, underneath the bed is a long-term storage over on that side, and then of course all the drawers. And these actually are Eastern Maple. Uh, this is a, another type of mahogany, as are the walls. Um, so uh, again, lots of stowage. Uh, oh, uh, hydronic heat that I was talking about. Each cabin does have hydronic heat if you needed it as a backup. Uh, and also an escape hatch. Uh, oh, and the walk around bunk, which was a requirement <laughs> for my wife. So I, who required that? I, I originally <laughs> designed it without that, and she saw the design plans and goes, yeah, this is not going to work. I need to uh, redesign. So we did. Um, it actually worked out very well. Of course, you have to have your cedar closet, hanging locker, with lights. Well done. So, gorgeous. and of course, you know, you got to throw in a little maple leaf and stuff here and there, just because you can. So... So that's pretty much our down below. That's outstanding. Um, tell us about the range of the boat. The um, right now, with the tanks I've gone online, we've probably got about an 8,000 mile range. Um, so you can actually add more, um, but I've got several tanks offline as that's a lot of fuel to carry, which we really don't need. Yeah. So, you know, last year, for example, we took fuel in Port Angeles spent three months in Alaska and came back with the same fuel we bought in Port Angeles. Is that right? Yeah, we had, still had a bunch on board. Uh, and I didn't even take that much. Typically at eight and a half knots, we'll burn about five and a half gallons. So, which I was always impressed by for a boat this size. That's, um, uh, you know, we, we can speed up, but absolutely. then our fuel burn exponentially goes higher. Unheard so, of. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and we're talking about different woods. This is actually South American cherry. <laughs> wow, is it really? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> uh, um, so, just kind of fun. Oh, there's those are oak cabinets. The top is uh, birch. Um, oh, and yeah, the, the wood in here is just yeah, just, and the, the other cabinet is all such cubbies. So it's it's just different, you know. So you get to look at all the different woods, and that that's another maple too. Oh, and something else, Carrick. Let's uh, take a look at these beams that I've got covered. So the main frames of the ship. Um, are covered with oak. Uh, I did it with a red oak, and I did that because so many of the the old sailing ships, uh, their mainframes were oak, mm -hmm. and I just thought it'd be kind of a cool thing. So we covered the big steel frames with oak. Wow. So yeah, yeah. So just beautiful, man. Um, all right. On that note, let's, yeah, why done. don't we go take a look at the wheelhouse? Let's do that. Thing. All right, we're up in the wheelhouse. Let's take a look. Yes, we are. And yes. as you just came through the pilot berth, uh, so usually when we're offshore, that's my bunk. Mm -hmm. So whoever's on watch, if there's any kind of an issue, traffic or whatever, they can just nudge me. When we're underway, we typically will fold this down. And then behind that is also a chart table. So you've got a nice large area to oh, fold your charts out. Uh, and actually under that bunk, I've got charts from complete from Mexico to Alaska. <laughs> Um, all Your stomping grounds. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so here in the wheelhouse, um, 
you'll notice nice comfortable watch chairs yeah we, again we like to be comfortable um, if we look all the way over to the port side we have a VHF radio next to that is a bridge watch which you can make a countdown for whatever the captain sets it for if it makes it to the end of the countdown a very loud and obnoxious alarm goes off waking up everyone on the boat I love those uh, they're, they're kind of cool yeah. um, anyway uh, up next to that is just entertainment um, then if we go straight down onto the console we have depth sounder uh, next to that is actually a jog stick so you can land the boat from either port or starboard so you've got a gear and throttle there and a jog stick and then as you probably already noticed in the center um, is the wheel but mm. there is no chair yeah the wheel is actually uh, a manual hand backup right. so if you were to lose your electronics that runs the jog sticks then you can still steer the boat no problem it's a lot more work i prefer using my finger on the jog stick um but anyway so that is a backup radar radar rudder indicator uh, gps which goes to the chart plotter which goes to the autopilot uh, also electronic compass um oh uh, another vhf and loud hailer so you've got all your uh, fog signals uh, already programmed in um, and that's about it oh uh, battery monitor uh, of course wet compass fully gimbaled uh, basic engine gauges um, again gear and throttle I usually run the boat from over here usually even if I'm landing on, on uh, port side I'll still run the boat from over here usually mm -hmm. uh, I guess so I've done it enough yeah Kind of old school stuff, but it's old school because it's it's reliable. It can get you there. It is. It is. And that's what you need it for. I've, I've run a lot of commercial boats, uh, especially the new ones, with, you know, the entire bridge is full of touch screens. And, mm -hmm. you know, this will take you anywhere on the planet. Uh, I've done basically the whole uh, coast of North America um, and never a problem. Uh, awesome. this, this is all I need. If I've got my radars and my nav equipment and my paper charts even still, uh, and of course the autopilot so you can put your feet up and have a cup of coffee and just be on watch oh a uh, single sideband so for offshore uh, weather reports right. contact etc and then behind me so this deck is probably one of our favorites um, i can see why so with the lines overhead we string a sail over uh, to give us a little sun protection mm -hmm. and of course when we're at anchor, now you're out of the wind. You've got kind of a nice lofty view. Uh, the different tables that we can put together. Uh, behind Carrick, who is filming, is the propane locker. And in fact, there's one of the sails that we normally put up uh, that'll go over this deck. And as you'll notice under the propane locker, there is no bottom. So if you have a propane leak, it's just going overboard. Uh, and then to the left of that, under the <coughs> blue cover is the barbecue, which took me many, many years to find. It's Australian built, and it's guaranteed to stay lit up to 50 knots. I've, te right? I've tested it to 35, and it works. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it always annoyed me when I'd come out when my barbecue was off. Never. I've had this one for probably, I don't know, 10 years or more, and never had an issue. Um, moving right along, we have our Solus B pack, uh, eight-person self-deploying um, life raft and actually usually we go with the Solus A but we weren't planning on doing any offshore this year mm -hmm. so we have to renew every year so next year we'll decide are we going back to our A pack rather than the B pack. Uh, next to that of course is your EPIRB uh, self-deploying if you're really having a bad day. A uh, couple of life rings and then back here is the swim step which actually is two parts so we've got the outdoor shower which we haven't assembled yet this year so we've got the outdoor shower and then the swim step that also is the second part which folds down i wanted it a little bit lower so you're quite low to the water for kayaking sure that's so awesome. we do a, we do an awful lot of kayaking and that just made it a little more convenient so for boarding uh getting on and off the boat
All right. Okay, so uh, as you can see, plenty of room, which I really, really enjoy after having been on so many other different boats, that everything is accessible uh, to either work on your engine, to maintain systems, etc. Um, I, however, did put most of these systems in or rebuilt them and or designed them. So I know where everything is and I wanted to make sure everything was accessible because there's always a future point where you're going to have to work on it. So anyway, uh, main cap 343. Um, up over here by Rick is the boiler system. So again, hydronic heat throughout the boat, or we switch to summertime loop and just heat our hot water. Uh, behind Carrick is the fuel assembly. Uh, we can move fuel from any tank to any tank. And the little stainless robot right there is a fuel oil separator. So in the 23 years I've had this boat, I've never had any uh, water in the separator. That's, so and I, I blame it on the, the tanks are all below the water line. So they're always a constant temperature. Sure. So I'm guessing we're not getting condensation, which has helped uh, this issue. So I've never had any in my ray cores, nor the separator. Um, behind me over here is the septic system, which is um, bacteria. and. Anything that goes in here, the only thing that comes out the other side is water and CO2. And it's all based on bacteria. So, and this, uh, this system is good for 10 to 12 people, full time. So I, I wanted to make sure I went oversized. Um, then the water manifold, we have uh, two aft tanks and a forward tank with a total of about 1,200 gallons. Uh, and actually we can switch the heads to fresh or to salt water. So when we're out, uh, we run the heads on salt water. When we're uh, at the dock, we run them on fresh. So it keeps for a nice, nice clean smelling head. Yeah, that's nice. Um, dual ray cores. Um, oh, and this, this large marshmallow here next to me is actually the accumulator tank for the boiler system. So what we did was we sized it because apparently anything more than 50% runtime on a boiler is not premium. So we are right about exactly 50%, which the boiler people said is excellent. So, and we did wow. that through a large accumulator tank. Yeah. So it takes a little longer to heat it the first time, but now once it's hot, it feeds the system. So again, fuel tanks all down both sides all on the boat. Um, let's see, bypass oil system over here next to the Halon system. Steering system. Um, behind Rick is the sound attenuated uh, 15k dub three phase uh, Isuzu industrial generator, which I put in. Which I think, Rick, it's behind you. Can you read the hours there? It's right on the gauge there. Yep. Uh, 2058. So 2058 hours? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I put that in brand new some years ago. Um, so. I think Not a uh, lot of hours. It, well, it's considered a, a 50,000 hour sure. uh, gen set. Yeah. So it should well outlast me. Um, oh, don't say that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's about it. So lots of storage. Uh, all the way in the back behind the generator is the uh, <clears throat> lazarette, which is the steering room. Um, which we also have a, a large capacity air tank in. And. Uh, Lots of room. I Lots mean, of room. Headroom, yeah. I mean, for a medium-sized man like myself. Hey, this is great, you know. I mean, I can work on my engine yeah, and, no, and not, is... not have to try to squish into a small area. Absolutely. So all of your filters are completely accessible. Um, you know, so here's your oil. Here's your fuel spin-ons. Here's an additional filter. So, so yeah, everything is, is very, very accessible. Very accessible. Uh, well and then down, of course, over here, we've got additional air hose so we can run any of our air tools, um, extension cords, clamps, etc. Um, of course, extra fluids. Um, and that's, that's about it. Oh, uh, hydraulic filters over here and then the returns over there. All right. And our fuel, capaci fuel capacity, we said was 8,000 8, gallons? No, 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 no I'm um, sorry. 
I would have to look. For, 40, I, it, it's 20, about an 8,000 mile range. Yeah, 8,000 mile range. Yeah, 40, yeah. yeah. so, so what would that be? 5,500, 6,000, something yeah. like that. Okay. And you can add more. So I've got several of the tanks closed off just because that's more capacity than, than we need. Okay. So if I can go to Hawaii and back and not buy fuel, then I think I've got plenty of capacity. That's, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, think, I think most sailboaters would be very uh, exactly. Very happy exactly. That is our in-depth walkthrough of the beautiful Elizabeth Ruth located in Paulsbo, Washington. I want to thank Paul and Tracy for taking the time to go through their incredible boat with us in such detail. The Elizabeth Ruth is a very special vessel and she is currently in search of her next very special owner. If you want more information or you'd like to schedule your own personal walkthrough, get in touch. Contact us using the contact information on this page and if you're watching this on YouTube, there are links in the description below. We'd welcome the opportunity to get you aboard for a viewing. And until then, thanks for watching.